first of all, to begin, do you have any questions on any of the assignments? I know maybe some specific questions you'll want to address in lab, but do you have a little more, any sort of general questions now? All right. What I want to do now is I want to rewind a little bit and go back early on in the semester about something we talked about. And we talked about, and I think I even said it at the time, that we, we talked a little bit about apps at the beginning, then we sort of went away and didn't talk at all about them for a while. And now we're going to kind of come back and talk about apps a little bit. Apps versus mobile websites. That sort of, I, I won't even say that this is a choice, all right? Because many or most organizations are going to do an all of the above thing, right? I mean, if you look, if you go to CNN, there's an iPhone app for it, there's an Android app for it, but there's also a mobile version of their page, you know? And they're sort of hedging their bets, you know, by doing that. They're sort of trying to cover all bases. You know, if you happen to have a Windows phone or a phone that doesn't, you, you know, a BlackBerry or, or some phone that um, they don't have an app for, you could simply go and view their mobile website. As long as you have a browser, you're okay. Even if you have an old-fashioned flip phone, you can view websites on it. And if you use responsive techniques, it can work. So I don't even say this is a choice, all right? And big organizations, yeah, they can go out and hire people to do all these things, all right? Develop all these things. Um, but small organizations, what do you do if you want to if you want to have a presence in all these different platforms? Um, you know, you may only <clears throat> you may only have one developer, and you know Monday through Wednesday they're the iPhone expert and. Thursday and Friday, they're the Android, and then the following week, they're the web person. You know, it's kind of tough. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about, first of all, some of the things that you can do on a mobile website that, how do I want to put this, that mitigates some of the natural issues that you run into with a web, a mobile website. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to look at sort of a, what do you call it, a shortcut to doing mobile applications <clears throat> by taking HTML5 code and actually generating an app using some of the tools that are available out there. So when you're done, you actually will have an app that runs across different mobile platforms. It may not be the best app. But at least you'll have that presence, and your organization can then put it out to the App Store or the, the uh, iApp Store or whatever it's called, and people can download it. Now, what are the big drawbacks associated with mobile websites as compared to apps? Security issues? Security issues? Possibly. You are connecting to the web. There is that issue. Um, deployment. Uh, pardon me? Deployment. Deployment, right. An app is typically harder to deploy than a web because if you deploy a web site, you make a change, that change is immediately reflected. Let's imagine, for example, that um, your Mapalorian Community College, let's say there's an app version <coughs> and a mobile site version. You fix a problem in that today or you add a feature in it today, and put it up to the web server, the next person who requests that is going to get the new version. Whereas, were it an app, people would have to update their app. And, you know, you can make that easier by automatic updating, but still, people have to go through that process to update it. What's another issue with regards to mobile websites compared to apps? Well, I would say browser. So many browsers, but with apps, it's kind of like either it's Android or it's iOS. Okay. Um, in, in a way, that's true. A mobile website has to accommodate. 
accommodate um, different mobile browsers. An app is written for simply one platform. So in a way, apps have an unfair advantage with that for the most part. Now, to be sure, there's versions of iOS and there's versions of Android, and that can cause you a little bit of grief. But I will say that browser compatibility is less of an issue with, with modern browsers than it was back in the old days. Back in the old days of web development, there's all kinds of browser compatibility issues. Now there seems to be less. The browsers are becoming more and more standardized, and that's a good thing. So yeah, that's correct, but it's probably, probably not a huge problem. What about if you're not connected to the internet? What happens? <laughs> All right. With an app, you're fine, right? With a mobile website, you may be in trouble. Well, what about like CNN's app? It has to access the internet to get the most top stories. That's true. Uh, CNN's app, let's say, it will access the internet to get the top stories. That's true. But if, for example, I was going on a plane trip and I looked at CNN's page when I was sitting in the airport and I put my phone on airplane mode, then got on the airplane. At the very least, I could still see the stuff that was downloaded from earlier. All right. So even though I'm not connected to the internet and I may not get if there's a new story that happens, an important new story that happens, at the very least I'd be able to see like an older version of that. So is that stored in cache? Or? Yeah, that, that would be stored, yeah, with that would be cached in, in, in a way. Okay. And that's exactly what we're going to be able to do with web pages now. With web pages, we're going to be able to store what's called an application cache that will allow us to store some versions of web pages so that if we're offline, we can at least see something. All right? And again, even if it's a message that says, you know, you're offline, whatever, you know, it's better than your app just dying. So I have a couple of demonstration um, pages. I posted a few links today, and we'll look at them. So to sort of, sort of mark out, stake out the topics over the next several classes, today we're going to talk about being able to cache stuff, being able to store stuff. There really are two techniques that allow for offline storage in mobile websites. One is through the application uh, cache that we'll look at. The other is actually local databases. You can actually store stuff in a local database and you can then call it back in. So there's some cool techniques. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to look at phone gap build, which allows us to take an HTML um, application and turn it into a native application for these different platforms. So, I'm going to go here, I have my tablet, and I'm going to make sure I'm connected to the web. There's a website. I can click around. There's another web page. I'm going to go and I'm going to simulate having no internet connection by going into my settings and I'm going to go into what's called airplane mode. Or actually, no, I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to turn off the Wi Fi. Okay, so I turned off my Wi Fi under settings. I go in here, open up my browser again. And I hit refresh, no network connection, blah, 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 web page not available. Now that particular page that I was looking at was a static page. It, was, it wasn't being updated like regularly, it's just a static page. I could just as well, if let's say it was an article I wanted to read, all right, if I was connected to it before, it would be okay if I brought up a cache version of it because it, given it as a relatively static site, it wasn't anything terribly where the time was, was, was
was urgent. It wasn't something where the, the fact that it's not the most recent version was a big deal. But lo and behold, because this wasn't developed with that in mind, I'm sunk. All right, I get this. Let's look now at another website. And let me go, I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi back on. Here we go. We're back. We're back on viewing that site. Now, I'm going to go to this site. And my Wi-Fi is on. All right. Here's a page. And we'll look at this. We'll look at this and look at the code and look at uh, tutorials to do this. But offline application using manifest, blah, blah, blah. We can see what that page looks like. If I go here and... going to back up. I'm going to go and turn my Wi-Fi back off again. All right, Wi-Fi is off. Go to my browser. That old page that I was looking at says it can't connect. The, the one with the musicians on it, because this was not written with any cash in mind. I go here and I bring that one up. And lo and behold, I don't get that message. I get the web page. So, yay. That's a good thing. Pretty nifty. Yeah, pretty nifty. Right. So, we're going to spend some time taking a look at how it does this. Uh, I haven't decided how deep I'm going to go into the database end of things. Uh, but we'll at least introduce that topic. But we will spend some time talking about um, the application cache. Apparently there are issues with it, but there's issues with everything, right? So, <laughs> so gotta, gotta get past that. So, let's go and look and We're going to spend a little bit of time looking at a couple of links that I have defined. this view source does not seem to want to work. I'm not really sure why, but you can do a view source and you can see how this code works. And notice that there's some JavaScript in here, but really a lot of the stuff you know, it's not tons of stuff for that to work. The key, or one of the keys, is this manifest file that we'll take a look at. W3Schools has a good little tutorial about the application cache. And it cites the advantages of doing it. Big advantage is offline browsing. All right, at least from our perspective. With offline browsing, that means that while you certainly won't be connected to the web and you won't be able pro, you know, to, to access all of the, the uh, content that's on a website, stuff that you saw before, you'll be able to view again because it's going to pull up a cached version of it.
Now, question. If I was developing a mobile website, would I want to add, would I want to allow every single page on my site to be cached? Probably not. Why not? It would take up a lot of resources on the client. That's that's true. Another reason? If there's changes made to the page and you're trying to re-request it, then you have to um, flush out the cache in order to get the changes made. Um. Yeah, but that that that's definitely um, an issue. But maybe coming from a slightly different angle. All right. You talked about if there's frequent changes to a page. For some pages, it might be dangerous or not a good idea to allow them to be cached. Something that's really timely information, you know, like, you know, if you were an investor and there were stock prices, you know, that would stink if you pulled up the, you know, if, if uh, you know, if, if a company, um, you know, uh, stock went way up and way down and you were looking at yesterday's stock prices if you're on a plane or news, or election results, or anything that would really be important that it be current. You don't want to cache that. Some other stuff you might want to cache, all right? So your job when you're developing this is decide and sort of carve up what pieces of the app, and, and I'm saying app, I actually mean website, mobile website, what pieces of it do you want to allow caching and what pieces do you not want to allow cash? All right? So that's sort of your challenge as you're developing these pages. Once you do that, though, people can then visit and view your content even if they're not online. If you think, for example, and again, I always come back to this because this is like right around dinner time for me and, and you know I'm starting to think what's for dinner today I actually want something different for dinner today I'm trying to in my mind map the path I take home and see what restaurants I go past but if you think of a restaurant you know if their whole site was cached that might be okay right if their directions so a restaurant isn't gonna get up and move their hours yeah, their hours might change, but there's a good chance if I looked at their if I looked at a restaurant's hours yesterday and it said they're open Monday through Friday, ten to nine, that today they probably haven't changed that. You know, maybe I maybe if it was cash for six months it would be an issue, but for a day or two that's probably not an issue. All right, caching offer offers other benefits as well. Cache resources load faster. Why? Because they're already loaded. So you're just pulling them back up. And secondly, that's a reduced server load. In other words, if you are pulling something from cache, then you don't have to worry about requesting it from the server. So the server doesn't have to handle that request. Advantages number two and three are the exactly the same sort of advantages that you get with any sort of client-side scripting, all right? Is that, hey, if it's already on the client, it doesn't have to make the trip to the server, and therefore it can work faster. Related to that is because it doesn't have to go to the server, the server doesn't get hassled with all these little requests. You know, every time you go to a page, it shows you, you know, it, you request a new copy of, you know, the, the restaurant's hours or something like that. If you could pull up a cached version, the server takes less of a hit. Really what we're interested in, though, is the fact that if you're not online, that you can still access the page. All right. We noticed in our example, and I think we noticed, let's bring it back up, this example code that I ran, if you look at the HTML tag, right off the bat, there is a new um, attribute for it. There's a manifest attribute. This manifest attribute allows you to define what is going to get cached and what is not going to get cached. 
Let me see if I can bring up this file. Yeah, file not found. Oh, there we go. Now, notice that this is two parts, cache and network. All right. What this is doing is this is telling the mobile browser, or telling any browser really, but we're most concerned about mobile browsers. This is saying what is okay to cache and what is it okay, or what is it not okay to cache. So that's an attribute there. It usually has app cache as the extension. So you put in cache manifest. Here are the list of things that we're going to cache, these resources. Here are the list of things that we are not going to cache. And notice again that wildcards are present as well. Finally, we have a fallback. All right. The fallback se uh, section specifies what will be used in the place of the files that we said are not going to be cached. So if we look at this example, we are caching these three resources. We are telling it that network, you got to be connected to the network for this. And we are saying that if we find an HTML file that is not covered by this to display the offline.html. An application's cache is only updated when the manifest file changes. Or the user clears their browser cache. Or the application cache is programmatically updated. So, if I change an image or change a JavaScript function. I have a new logo, let's say. So I go in and I edit logo GIF. That will not cause the application cache to refresh on the client side because I have not changed that. They have a version of logo.gif. It doesn't go out and look and say, hey, there's a new logo.gif, so I'm going to go out and grab it. The only thing that would make the cache refresh other than the user clearing it or you write code to do that would be to modify the manifest. And what they suggest, they, can, they suggest a nice little tip here, is notice that there's a comment here. The pound sign represents a comment. And they said that just changing a comment constitutes a change of the manifest. So if I went and made a new logo, or I changed the CSS file, or I changed that main JavaScript file, then if I went and did nothing to the manifest, users would still be using their cached version of those files, which may not be what I want. If I went in though and made any change to the manifest file, even changing the comment, or putting in a new comment or whatever, then the browser will be smart enough to know the manifest is new to go and recache those things. 
So that's kind of a tip that they have here. So there's notes on application cache. Be careful what you cache. Once a file is cached, the browser will continue to show you the cached version even if you change the file on the server. To ensure the browser updates the cache, you need to change the manifest file. All right. So in other words, like I said, if I were to change the JavaScript, the CSS, or the GIF file, if that's all I did, it would not update the cache. Now, no, browsers have different sizes for cache data. Some browsers have a 5 megabyte limit per site. That would be another reason why you might lose stuff out of the cache. If you really had, um, if you're caching, if the user is caching a lot of stuff from your page, then it would be possible that they would fill up that 5 MB. My guess then would be the browser would decide what to get rid of to keep it underneath the limit, and that data would no longer be cached. All right, that's the browser's job. It probably would do like the oldest stuff that hasn't been accessed in a while would probably get rid of, but that's just a guess. So, I'd like to come up with an example. whether to come up with an example now or show an example of this next week. I probably will show an example next week. That will give me time to look for any of the gotchas. Here they give another example of this with, again, get date and time. All right. Try opening this page and go offline. Pardon me? Yeah, I said you could create an example of like um, football scores from last week versus this week. Yeah, that, that, would, that would actually be good. I could create actually a little PHP. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Create something that's dynamic. I think this one attempts to show that, demonstrate that by showing you the um, date and time. So in other words, I keep hitting refresh, it keeps updating the date and time. Actually, it gives me the button. Now I disconnect from the internet, I think. Things are like jammed in here. Thank you. This one? This guy here? Oh, no, it's, uh, on the computer. Just go oh. start and then network center. Network connections. Should just be able to right click and just I wonder if because I'm not admin, I can't do that. Well, there's a wall for 
That's a great usability feature when you have to put a giant arrow on, on your screen to tell people how to get to some place that they want to be. All right, so now we go and open the browser. <laughs> and I hit refresh, and it shows me, oh, it's doing this via JavaScript. The point is, is that I am... Uh, it's updating that because it's, it's doing that via JavaScript, right? But it's online, all right? And again, what's the key to this? All right, they have, they have some silly little JavaScript to do this. The key thing about this is they have the app cache, which is set up to... cache those resources in addition to that page. All right. Now I'll plug back in and we'll be all set. I'll try to do a more involved example next time. That's, I, don't, I don't want to just try and wing it and end up screwing up. All right, good. We're back connected again. Whew. This we are going to do in, in a little bit of, this, this you will have an assignment for, and, and it will be something to the effect of taking what you did for your next couple of labs and make it so that it caches. It should be pretty easy to do. All right. Okay, what was the other thing that we were looking at? Ah, client-side databases. This actually talks about two features of the HTML5 standard, offline web applications, and client-side database storage. What if we were to do both ways? I'm sure you could probably mix and match some of the stuff and, and do that and, and be okay. They show an example here where you have products, simple inventory management, and it shows these things, and you can go and do that. They have some HTML code with the on click and all that. They do have the cache manifest, so this actually is using both techniques combined together. And they have some JavaScript code that goes in and, first of all, looks to see if your browser supports databases. This is very similar to what we did in the uh, geolocation um, HTML5 feature. We got to make sure that the user is using a browser that can do this because not all browsers support this. So we check that and see if it is. If they do support browsers, uh, the, the browser does support databases, we call some initialization and create the database. And then we see how we actually have embedded in our client-side JavaScript code to access 
and get rid of the old data and update it with data from the database. Um, you, you have to put it in a way that it, it, it's like any other resource that you would put, like with a CSS file or whatever. So you would put that like in your folder, okay. like in the, in the application's root right, folder. Right, but I'm saying like if we had a common folder for all of our pictures and stuff right. like that, um, would we put the file path in the manifest file in order for it to reach it? Or would we be redirecting it based on our website? That's a good question. If you if you had let's say your manifest in a folder and you referred to files in other folders, I'd have to think that one through. I'd have to I'd have to do some investigating. I'm not really sure off the top of my head. I was just yeah, that, that's that's a, that's a real good real good question. I think these examples are pretty simplistic where everything is all on the same page. So. Um, this is something that if you want to play with, if you finish your other assignment early and you're bored, um, this will give you something to do because that, the next assignment will be to go in and take, um, to take um, what you've done for this next assignment coming up and make it so that it's available offline. All right? Should just be a matter of creating a manifest file. Should be pretty easy, but you know, we'll find out. All right. It's it's always you know. So I'm like the dentist that says it's not going to hurt. Right. Yeah, it's not going to hurt him. Right. Uh, it'll be easy for me. I just have to sit back and grade it. Right. Um, I you're going to do it, but yeah. Right. 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 Um, now, um, thinking forward for the rest of the term. I think I missed the boat on the quiz this week, so the quiz will be next week. That'll be the last quiz, and then there'll be a final. Um, I will have to look at the schedule. You do have this two-week assignment to, to develop using Warful. Your next assignment I described to you, um, even though um, it's not posted out there yet. I definitely want to do one more assignment where you use PhoneGap Build to create an, an app. Now, before you start getting angry, thinking this is a lot of stuff and all that, those two assignments should actually be pretty quick. The one I demonstrated, in fact, if you can find the old video, I demonstrated to my 216 class using PhoneGap Build. I promised them I could take an HTML file and within five minutes, I think I said, I could make an Android app and install it on my phone. And I'm pretty sure I did that with, with a few seconds to spare. All right? So that shouldn't be a lot of work. All right? I'll have to look at the schedule to see if there will be any more assignments after that. Probably not, but we'll see. All right? I'm, I'm trying to think what week. We're in week 11 now. Um, next week is week 12, obviously, and then you have something to do. Yeah, I'm thinking those will be the last two assignments. Uh, I'll double check that and let you know for sure. I, I probably will not, well, I don't know. We'll see how we do as far as work days going. I, I like giving work days, especially with a smaller class, but there is stuff that we need to go over. So we'll play that by ear as far as how that goes. We might do like today where I go and end a little bit early. I'm going to end in a minute here. And then um, you have an extra half hour if you want to take advantage of that to work on your lab stuff. Any questions? I have mine in lab, so. Okay. Excellent. All right. We'll see you down there.